Last but not least, we have Carmen Guerrero Napil. Where's the footies? Carmen Guerrero Napil is a journalist, author, and public servant born in Ermita, Manila, into the Guerrero clan of that town. Between 1946 and 2006, she worked in the Evening News, the Philippine Herald, Manila Times, and the Manila Chronicle, where she wrote a column for 12 years. Got a long way to go in inquiry. <laughs> she has written 10 books in addition to contributing lectures, essays, and short stories in other publications here and abroad. As a, as a uh, public servant, Ms. Bill was the chairperson of the National Historic Historical Commission during the 1960s and Manila Historic Commission in the 1990s. Here tonight to read a portion of her mother's delightful essay is the chair of Manila Historic Commission, Ms. Gemma Cruz Ireland. <laughs> Where's the Badis by Carmen Guerrero Napil. I think she wrote this when I was uh, in high school. I remember she asked me to read it to see if I understood it. And I said, why? Well, if a 12 year old can understand it, everybody else can. <laughs> All right. A Filipino may denationalize himself, but not his stomach. He may travel over the seven seas and the five continents and the two hemispheres and lose the flavor of home and forget his identity and believe himself a citizen of the world. But he remains, gastronomically at least, always a Filipino. For if in no other way the Filipino loves his country with his stomach, Consider the Pinoy abroad, sick with longing, decides to go to the strange city for a Chinese restaurant, the closest thing to his beloved gastronomic country. There, in the company of other Asian exiles, he will put his nose, finally, in a bowl of rice and find it more fragrant than an English rose garden more exciting than a castle on the Rhine, and more delicious than pink champagne. Better than a Chinese restaurant is the kitchen of a kababayan. <laughs> when in a foreign city, a Pinoy searches every busy sidewalk, theater, and restaurant for the well-remembered golden features of a fellow Pinoy. But make no mistake, it is only because he is in desperate need of a Filipino meal. And, like a homing pigeon, he follows his nose to a Filipino kitchen that is well stocked with bagong, patis, garlic, balat ng lumpia, gabi leaves, and miswa. When the Pinoy finally finds such a treasure house, he will have every meal with his kababayan. <laughs> Forgotten are the bistros and the smart restaurants. The back of his hand to the Four Seasons and the Tour d'Argent. Ah, the regular orgies of cooking and eating that ensue. He may never have known his host before. In Manila, if he saw him again, they would hardly exchange two words. But here, in this odd, barbarian land where people eat inedible things and have never heard of patis, they are brothers forever. 